In this video, I wanted to share how I've been using the Aperture Lantern Softbox to light my videos, using it as the modifier on my key light. Welcome to the video. Again, I just wanted to share with you how I've been using the Aperture Lantern Softbox as the modifier on my key light to light my YouTube videos for the last, I don't know, month or two months. In doing so, I, I wanted to show you just a couple different tips and tricks that you can employ to get nice lighting for your YouTube videos or even just like an interview light setup, etc., using only one key light. And as you can tell from the opening of this video, we're not using any other light besides the key light with the Aperture Lantern Softbox. I'm using the window behind me as a backlight. So I'm gonna show you a couple different setups and a couple of different ways you can position the key light with the Aperture Lantern Softbox to get a variety of looks. And then I'm gonna change into a few different angles just to give you some inspiration about how you can think about setting up your YouTube videos and get a more dynamic, and not even just dynamic, but just a cleaner, um, more legible and just nicer looking image. I recently started using the Aperture Lantern Softbox on my key light to light my YouTube videos because I have a really small studio space, a little home office that's in the converted, it's in a converted attic. The ceilings are really low and not only that, but you can maybe see in this corner over here how the ceiling starts slanting down to <laughs> an even lower height. So it's not only low, but it's also really narrow. It's really hard to get a light situated given the constraints of the constraints of the space. And what makes the Aperture Lantern Softbox good for this application is that it is a relatively small softbox, but because of its lantern, but because it is a lantern, the light wraps around better, in my opinion, than a comparably, comparably, comparably sized traditional softbox. So it's just been, it's been perfect. So you can see how just using this one light, how I get a nice wrap around this side of my face and the shadows are very soft. I am cheating a little bit here because I do have a five in one reflector right off camera here, bouncing some light back into the shadow side of my face, but I'll just take that away and show you what it looks like without it. And even though now there's more contrast, you still get that same really soft shadow. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the Aperture Lantern Softbox in detail, but I just wanted to show it in a practical use case for you. But real quickly, uh, you do get this bag with the Aperture logo on it. Isn't it weird that we all say Aperture when it's clearly spelled Aperture? And another really nice thing about it is that it's extremely easy to set up and tear down. So it doesn't, you don't have to worry about like all these little rods that you have to put in place around the little ring. You just, I'll show this in B-roll, but it's just like super simple to just get it popped open. And then when you take it off the light, break it down in a matter of seconds, really. And if you are in a small space like me, I don't tend to leave my lights set up um, because I need to move around this space. Like right now, I literally cannot even get out of the room. So the fact that it's really easy to set up and tear down is another great bonus. And the last thing that I'll mention is it's pretty cheap. I think it's going for about $80 right now. So for the quality that you get, for the ease of setup and tear down, I think it's a pretty good deal for a softbox. So for this setup, I have the key light just about, it's not quite 45 degrees. It's a little bit more frontal. I don't know, 60, 70 degrees? I don't know, I'm not good at math. Off to the side, and you can see what it's doing as far as lighting, you know, giving me a bright side and a dark side, but there's, again, a nice wrap around to the shadow side. No, no harsh shadows. And I have, like, a ridiculously large beak of a nose, which does cast <laughs> a pretty hard shadow on the opposite side of my face. But even with that, it's doing a good job of making it look soft. So another cu a couple things to think about when positioning your light is also the height of the light. You wanna get it up high um, in order to cast shadow down. That's where we typically expect light to come from. You know, if it's a ceiling light, obviously the sun is high in the sky. Of course, there's exceptions to that when the sun comes down, it's much, I guess, more parallel. If you have practicals, they could be at your eye level. So there are exceptions, but as a general rule of thumb, when setting up a key light, it's a good practice or a good safe bet, essentially, to get it up higher. That way it's casting a shadow under your jaw, giving you a nice, giving you some nice de definition. If you have like, if you don't have a really strong jaw or maybe a double chin or something, it can 
be more flattering, obviously, than something that's more frontal or even below, which you obviously want to avoid unless you're going for Vincent Price kind of Halloween thing. Wow. So if you are wearing glasses like me, getting the light up and out of your line of sight for the most part will keep the reflection of the light in the softbox out of your glasses. As far as the key light, it doesn't really matter. I'm using the Godox VL150, which is kind of a middle of the road um, as far as price is concerned. I think it's around $400, but you can spend way less money than that. I only have the light to set to uh, 31%. So you don't have to get 150 watt light. You could get something like the Godox SL60, which I think you can get now for about a hundred bucks. And there's a lot of similar 60 watt lights, you know, in that ballpark as well. You just want to make sure that the light you buy is a Bowens mount light. So I'm just going to move the light and position it a couple different ways so you can see the differences in just moving the light around. Now I move the light to about 45 degrees and it's still at the same height and still, yeah, all I really did was just shift the stand over a few degrees. And you can see how, you know, we just get a little bit more definition on the shadow side. And again, if I take this bounce away, this fill, you can see it much more dramatically. And this is kind of like this, you might have heard of this Rembrandt lighting and you might just kind of just play with the positioning of it, but I might have it a little bit too bright actually, but you get this triangle on the opposite cheek. And that was something that the painter Rembrandt um, kind of pioneered back in the 17th century, 16th century, long time ago. <laughs> but that's what that refers to. It's a moodier look. I mean, it's very nice looking. And again, if you like it, I would encourage you to just try to fill in that shadow side of your face a little bit with a bounce. And then also, if you did want to get another light, you could also position another light pretty much directly on the opposite side of the key light at a lower output to fill in a little bit of the shadow on the opposite side. So there's setup number two, and now I'm just going to position the light pretty much right over the lens to get us a nice frontal light, and I'll show you that. If you're doing any kind of like current events or news type videos or even comedy, this is the kind of light that I would recommend you, that you do, that you go for. Because again, um, consider the message you're sending with your lighting. If you have like a shadowy, moody look, your viewers might think that you are a shadowy <laughs> or moody person or that you're hiding something. You know, it's all kind of subconscious, like depending on the kind of thing that you're saying, they might not think that because it doesn't really fit, but also if you're, if the things you're saying don't really match the aesthetic of your lighting setup and your studio setup, et cetera, they're, you know, you might not be doing yourself any favors. And let me take the bounce off so you can see how this looks without that. There you go. Again, it's still pretty frontal. I do have a little bit of shadow on this side, but the ratio is much more even on both sides of my face now. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit from that. Um, I just wanted to show you how I'm using the Aperture Lantern softbox as a key light, which it's not necessarily designed to do, but it's completely, I think it's a great use for this light, given that it's such a small softbox, but it gives you such a nice wrap of light considering its small size. So if you are in a constricted space, if you've got low ceilings, if you're in an attic with slanted ceilings and you're having a hard time setting up lights, this might be a good way to go for you. And I just wanted to share that. That was just something that I've been doing and I felt like it might be helpful if other people knew about it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked the video, you know what to do. If you disliked it, go ahead and hit the dislike button twice just to let me know how much you disliked it. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. That would be greatly appreciated. But otherwise, I'll just see you in the next video.